it's Nina. Thanks so much for joining me today. Today I have a video to share with you that features creating watercolor backgrounds to use behind die cuts. I'm going to be using the Gonzai Tombi watercolors today and I'm getting started by applying some water into my palettes and I'm making sure that my wells have a good amount of water in them. The Gonzai Tombies are a newer paint for me so I'm getting used to using them and I find that by adding a lot of water into the wells that I need before I start painting is very helpful. So I created a total of five different backgrounds today and I was just kind of playing around with the watercolors and seeing what kind of things I could do. I was very interested in seeing how they would create backgrounds because backgrounds are something I really like to create. In all of these backgrounds I used blue colors and I'm only going to show you how I created one of the backgrounds simply because I just did kind of the same sort of thing on all of them other than I just played around with how I used the colors. But I used the same exact colors for each panel and I'm just dropping color in, kind of swirling it around, creating different textures. I'm going to dry in between each layer because I want the hard lines from the watercolor drying because I think it looks cool. Now, Gonzai Tombi watercolors do react when you apply water on top of them. They're a very reactive pigment. So I can go ahead and apply water droplets on top of my painting to get some texture. This looks really cool, especially when doing sort of underwater or galaxy type backgrounds. That would be really fun to add those splatters. So I'm going to add even more texture by applying some of the shimmery watercolors. This is like a metallic white. And then I'm going to apply some true white on top of that with just some splatters. And again, I'm really creating some texture with this. It's going to dry back a little bit, but the little bits of dots and flecks of color are really going to add interest to this background. All right, so next they need to go ahead and start working on creating the frame for my card. So I'm cut a piece of cardstock to three and three quarters by five inches. I die cut the succulents journaling card die from that to create a frame. I'm also going to use that succulents journaling card die and cut it from some white cardstock. Now this I'm not creating a frame, this I'm going to be actually using the physical die cut. On the other one I just needed the frame and I set the actual die cut piece aside to use in another card at some other point. So I'm using my craft pick to help me pop this die out of the frame. And this craft pick is really great for getting these tiny little areas to make sure that I get all those little pieces out of the die. So with my now dry watercolor panel, I'm going to take it into my Fiskars reinforced trimmer and trim down the edges so that way it's the same size as my frame, which is three and three quarters by five inches. Once I've trimmed down that panel, I'm going to add it to the back of my frame with a bit of foam tape. I'm going to apply two layers of foam tape to the back side of this frame. I'm going to trim down my foam tape, which is out about half of an inch. I'm going to trim it down so that way it's about a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to double layer this foam tape. So I'm going to have two layers of foam tape. And that'll give this some nice dimension off of that watercolor panel. So it's going to create a recessed look. The best way to line up these panels I found was to go ahead and turn it on its side. And because they're the exact same size, I don't have to worry about one being bigger than the other. And I can just turn that on its side and press it down and it's lined up perfectly. For the succulents journaling card that I cut from that white card stock, I'm adding some liquid adhesive to the back side along the big areas. I'm not worried about the little thin lines of the outline of the flowers just because they're very, very small and adding all that adhesive was going to be very dangerous adding it on top of my watercolor panel, especially considering that these Gunzai Tommies are so reactive. Even that little bit of glue, I had to be very careful I wasn't reactivating that watercolor. Now for my sentiment, I'm using this painted hello stamp from Neat and Tangled. I, because I'm making five cards, you're going to see I have two here stamped in that same blue ink, which was from Altenu. Now, this Altenu ink stays wet for a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and add some clear embossing powder to that sentiment. I'm going to heat set these, and once I've got those completely heat set and melted, I'm actually going to apply a second layer of embossing powder on top of these sentiments. Now, I have to work very quickly here because that embossing powder will only stick if the heat embossing is still warm. Once it's cooled off, it's not going to stick. So I very quickly added a second layer of embossing powder, heat set it, and then one more time I'm going to repeat that process and add a third layer of embossing powder. And because I added all these layers of embossing powder, that creates a little bit more of a dimensional sentiment. And I think it really looks beautiful. That really nice heat embossed sentiment with a bit more extra dimension looks just really cool and very, very shiny. It also darkens up the sentiment a little bit more, which I think helped match the card very nicely. I used the coordinating die to cut that sentiment out and I'm going to pop it up off of my card with some foam tape. And I'll put that over top of the banner so that way I have a sentiment going along that area. 
You could use some of the sentiments that's included in the succulents stamp set, which matches this die, but I wanted to use a die cut sentiment today. I added some double sided adhesive to the back side of this whole entire panel, and I'm going to add this onto a piece of white cardstock, and that'll mat this beautiful watercolored panel and frame nicely. And I just think it really just draws your eye into the center area of the card. To embellish my card, I used a few Sparkling Clear sequins from Pretty Pink Posh. I used both the Sparkling Clear Mix and the 3mm size. The 3mm are super tiny, but I really love having that extra size to be able to mix in with my larger sequins. Like I said, I created a total of five different cards, and I'll have pictures here so you can kind of get a quick look at all of the different panels that I created. I also have still pictures over at my blog, so you want to go ahead and check that out over there to see the photos of the finished cards. I hope this video has given you some inspiration on how you can use your Gonzai Tommy watercolors, or any watercolors for that matter, to create backgrounds which you can use in a variety of different ways, including behind die cuts such as this beautiful succulent die from Neat and Tangled. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more inspiration. If you enjoyed today's video, there are two more videos on the right here that you might like featuring Neat and Tangled products. Thanks so much for stopping by and spending some time with me. I will see you again soon and have a great day. Bye!